sooner has the Pope departed here in Washington, D.C., we get then uh, President uh, Xi. Now, uh, I think uh, it, it's up to us to develop some kind of analysis of what's going on in China. And uh, this is not so easy because the place is opaque. The factions are not publicly identified, right? There are no parties. The closest uh, approximation we have is this idea of one country, two factions, or one country, two coalitions, as it sometimes goes. Back in a minute on World Crisis Media. Welcome back to uh, World Crisis Radio. I have to uh, do one uh, warning uh, this week. Um, you know that uh, nasty intelligence community COINTELPRO stalking operation uh, being run against the uh, tax Wall Street Party. Suffice it to say, the dossier is growing and uh, many people will be very unhappy with what they find about themselves in there. The only hope for them is cease and desist now, uh, and maybe you won't be in the dossier. But if you keep going, you will be prominently uh, featured when this uh, hits the uh, the streets, and it will be soon. Um, I have to, uh, unfortunately, make an appeal uh, to uh, avoid one uh, trap that's on the on the internet. When people ask you to sign a petition. Uh, uh, even if this is the White House, right? I, I wouldn't sign petitions in general because I don't think they they uh, have much effect unless you get up to 50 million people or something like that, and that's very hard to do. Um, here's the problem. Uh, if you go to private websites and start putting up um, petitions, and if you go and take part in that petition, I urge you not to do it. Do not do it. Do not sign petitions. In particular, there's a website called Some of Us, S-U-M-O-F-U-S. And on there, there's a petition that involves the Tax Wall Street Party. I have to warn you, that's not us. The Tax Wall Street Party has nothing to do with putting that petition up there. And I would ask you to think twice and thrice before you give your name or any of your contact out of there, because we don't know where that goes. We think that the contacts may well go into the hands of the COINTELPRO network. In other words, the FBI may get your name. So if you don't want that, if you don't want to be on that list, don't sign that petition. It seems to be something about our, our program. If you want to associate with the Tax Wall Street Party, I'll tell you how. One way, of course, is go to tarpley.net, tarpley.net, go into that speaker's bureau. There's a box there. Write me a little note. I'll be happy to forward it to the uh, well-oiled machine here, and you'll start getting the uh, briefing, the morning briefing. And if you're interested in being on our conference call, you can mention that too. Say something a little bit about yourself if you have a minute. Uh, that's one way. The other way, which you can do anywhere, anytime, is info, I-N-F-O, short for information, I-N-F-O, at T-W-S-P dot U-S, T-W-S-P dot U-S, so Tax Wall Street Party. So info at T-W-S-P dot U-S. That's the way to vote. Vote with your feet. Join us. Join us in the streets on Sunday the 27th in Midtown Manhattan to welcome Putin at Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza, 2 p.m. Uh, Sunday, the 27th of uh, September. You'll be right in the middle of a world historical series of events. Right? This is going to go from the Putin's address to the General Assembly to the, uh, to the UN Security Council. But right now, what I'm urging you to do is don't sign petitions involving us, because frankly, we have no idea where your personal information will be going. It's not us. We're not doing it. You're going to put yourself in the hands of somebody you don't know. And unfortunately, that may turn out to be the NAG network, the counter gang, the COINTELPRO stalkers, uh, and so forth. So watch out. Uh, don't be uh, fooled by uh, you know, edifying rhetoric, things that sound good. Uh, they're not so good. So uh, I forgot to mention now on the uh, question of the Hajj, uh, the proposal is coming from a number of countries 
that Saudi Arabia is obviously incompetent, whatever Bernie Sanders thinks. They're simply incompetent. They can't organize this. It, it, it happens again and again and again for years and decades on end. It's been happening for, what, 1,300, 1,400 years. I've lost count. Um, but the idea then is the organization of the Islamic conference could at least be engaged to set up some kind of a panel or board or international consortium that could uh, provide the, the elementary stuff, right? Uh, crowd control, infrastructure, and so forth. Now, President Xi is coming to town. Now, of course, we have a well-paid China lobby. We got a new China lobby, and these are people who are on the payroll. And you can you can see some of them, right? You can see all sorts of people who are singing the praises of China. And I don't think this is uh, appropriate. I think we have to be uh, skeptical. And fortunately, the main U.S. relation is with Russia, not with uh, China. China is important, but it's uh, second to uh, to Russia. Now, President Xi uh, is a wonderful, he's a super duper, I would call him. He comes to town and he says, guess what? I'm going to crack down on cyber hacking. I'm going to I'm going to crack down on cyber espionage and all that nasty hacking that these websites in China seem to be doing. Well, a lot of these websites are from the People's Liberation Army and they steal things, right? They steal industrial secrets, state secrets, uh, and so forth. And quite frankly, this is not so good. Now, I realize those nasty neocons have uh, gotten them riled up, but still we have to deal with reality as it is today. And uh, it's also those neocons, by the way, who have driven Russia so far into the hands of China that I think some Russians may have um, some second thoughts. Anyway, whatever, however that may be, uh, we need good relations with Russia. Now, with China, it's going to take some, uh, some work. Uh, if you're going to stop the hackers, uh, good. Now, the other one from Xi is he says he's going to implement a cap-and-trade system for carbon emissions. Now, cap and trade, as you remember, this is the, the, the Markey Waxman bill, a monstrosity that has never passed. I hope it never will. It sets up a speculative market in carbon permits, right? Carbon emissions permits. And that, of course, means that a whole new sector of hedge fund hyenas and zombie bankers will move in. Their, their speculation will drive up the costs of these things in the same way that they've been driving up the price of oil on the, uh, on the various London derivatives markets and so forth. Um, and now, at the same time, she comes to town. Uh, he's reeling, right, because they've just had a major devaluation of the Chinese currency, right? Pepe Escobar may think that that's fine, but it's not fine. Uh, and the stock market has lost about a third of its value, right? The place has been transformed into a bubble economy. Now, what we seem to have here is the playing out of the Chinese factional situation, about which it is hard to be well informed. But having a certain acquaintance with China, going back to some months I spent in Taiwan, Taipei, uh, at the late uh, 1980s, I actually... I predicted the um, the out the, some some kind of internal strife in uh, in China. What turned out to be Tiananmen. I predicted that in, uh, in, a, in a magazine article. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute on the uh, youth league versus the princelings. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So we're trying to look at uh, President Xi of uh, of China now. Uh, the the the. Um, People who are singing hosannas uh, characteristically are unable to offer much analysis of what actually is going on. Right? They have these bland assurances. Oh, it may look like a grab for world domination, but that's not the the idea. Uh, the idea has always been in China that there are these two factions, right? One country, two coalitions. So we have the populist or youth league faction. This would be. Uh, the outgoing president who left office a couple of years ago, President Hu Jintao, and pr uh, Prime Minister uh, Wen Jiaobao. So uh, they were putatively from the Youth League, and they count as the populists. They're interested in uh, things like uh, affordable housing, health care, uh, actual reduction of air pollution in the sense of the 
the air situation. They're interested in the situation of farmers, the several hundred million people primarily in the interior of China, right? The poor peasants and poor workers who still uh, are, are this island of, uh, of, of really stubborn poverty in the middle. So that's the the, pop, the uh, populists or the youth league, because for many years they came out of the youth league. And once again, that would be uh, Hu Yaobang, the guy, he, when he died, that set off Tiananmen, right? Uh, Hu Jintao, recent president, Wen Jiaobao, I think Wen was the guy who uh, who did such a great job at the Copenhagen meeting by uh, confounding uh, the Westerners. Uh, so those those would be the populists. Now you've also got then the elitists, the elitists including the princelings. And who's a princeling? Well, she is a princeling. These are nepotists. They are mediocrities. They have inherited their posts from their more active and more um, capable ancestors, uh, the princelings. So they're all sons and daughters, primarily of revolutionary era people, generals in the People's Liberation Army, friends of Mao, uh, friends of Chu Enlai, and so forth, the princelings. And of course, you can have princelings also among the populists. Uh, I should have mentioned, right? Bo Xilai, the boss of Chongqing in the center of China. Now, that was a populist uh, he was, uh, he's a, he's, but he's a princeling too. He's the son of Bowie Bo. Bowie Bo was in the, uh, in the Politburo, right? So, uh, th these, these guys are the, uh, princelings among the populace. And there's the whole, the whole top layer is, is princeling. So it's kind of a nepotistic oligarchy on both sides, but there are, uh, differences. Uh, Jiang Zemin, Jiang Zemin is the Shanghai mafia, uh, the coast, the people who are wealthy, those are the elitists. So the idea with the elitists is they're concerned with foreign investment, foreign contacts. Um, they're interested in the private sector. They're interested in um, market reforms. Uh, they're neoliberal, but neoliberal with a difference, right? They're, they're a very interesting academic study that I found writes about state neoliberalism. So it's neoliberalism, but etatique. It's state-oriented neoliberalism. Um, now, the problem that they have is that there's no legitimacy except the rising standard of living. And when the stock market begins to crash, they get into big trouble because what then is the legitimacy? Nobody but nobody believes in Leninism. Uh, nobody says uh, we got to avoid the capitalist road. They're way down the capitalist road. So all that stuff is now uh, completely obsolete. I would also like to point out that the neoliberal or state neoliberal thrust of, uh, of, the, uh, of the current government uh, is, is quite – possibly responsible for the uh, for the crash. In other words, you're not going to read in the London Economist that free market neoliberal reforms caused the Chinese model to start stuttering and uh, and have this uh, you know terrible one third loss in the stock market. Uh, let's go to an article in the London Economist. Right, this is one of the moments when London drops its usual inscrutable mask. The Economist, uh, July first, twenty thirteen. Uh, by a certain SC in Hong Kong. So here's the idea. Um, it's a comparison between Abenomics, right? Abenomics in China is to try to, in, in Japan, is to try to get your currency down and try to have a big stimulus, uh, make the, you know, pump lots of liquidity into the system. But then we have uh, the uh, Chinese model under Prime Minister Li, L-I, Li Keqiang. So Li, they call this Liconomics. <laughs> Liconomics. Okay, Li, K, Li, Mr. Li, that's his last name. So he's, he's Mr. K. Li. They turn that around and make it Mr. Li K. Liconomics. All right, what are the points? It's a very interesting essay. No stimulus. Stimulus is a dirty word in China, just like the United States. Uh, they say the Chinese post-crisis stimulus was discredited because it was too big. Too much growth? How can that be? Is that an oligarchy saying our privileges are threatened? Cut back. Then, number two, deleveraging under Xi and Li. Uh, deleveraging means pay down debt. Right? So if you just do that, 
uh, then uh, that's going to be deflationary. You're going to get a slowdown in actual economic activity. And then 